Imagine being a small, impoverished nation already grappling with insurgency and poverty. Your people are struggling to survive, and then your neighbors turn against you, imposing crippling sanctions that threaten to push your country into a humanitarian crisis. This was the reality Niger faced, and their response has sent shockwaves across West Africa. Let's start by setting the stage in Niger, a landlocked nation in West Africa that has been grappling with insecurity and instability. In July 2023, a military coup ousted President Mohamed Bazoum, the democratically elected leader, plunging the country into a constitutional crisis. The coup was a shocking turn of events that strained Niger's ties with the international community, particularly the economic community of West African states, ESO WAS. This regional bloc responded swiftly and decisively. Imagine being a Nigerian citizen, waking up one day to find your borders sealed, trade routes cut off, and the threat of military intervention looming overhead. That's precisely what happened when ECOWAS imposed a series of harsh sanctions on Niger. We're talking about border closures, trade restrictions, asset freezes, and even the establishment of a no-fly zone for commercial flights. And as if that was not enough, neighboring Nigeria cut off electricity supply to Niger without considering the devastation that could cause. It was a move that sent shockwaves through the impoverished nation causing immediate humanitarian consequences. Nigeria supplies about 70% of Niger's electricity supply, and that just disappeared overnight. But ECOWAS wasn't playing around. They demanded the immediate release and reinstatement of President Bazoum, declaring him the only recognized and elected leader by the regional bloc, the African Union, and the international community any acts by the military junta were deemed illegitimate. The sanctions were intended to be crippling, with ECOWAS vowing to take all measures necessary to restore constitutional order in Niger, including the use of force. Can you imagine the fear and uncertainty that gripped the Nigerian people, already struggling with poverty and insecurity? Would ECOWAS follow through on its threats? Would the military junta back down? The stakes were high, and the consequences far-reaching. The impact of ECOWAS's sanctions on Niger's already fragile population was nothing short of devastating. Imagine being a mother, struggling to feed your children because essential food supplies were cut off, or a small business owner watching your livelihood crumble as trade came to a halt. These were the harsh realities that Nigerians faced. Let's start with the issue of food insecurity. Niger is a country that has long grappled with chronic hunger and malnutrition, with over 4 million people already facing severe food insecurity before the sanctions. But when the borders were sealed, the situation took a turn for the worse. Aid agencies cried out supply chains were disrupted leaving many communities without access to basic staples like grains, vegetables, and livestock. Can you imagine the desperation of parents watching their children go hungry with no end in sight? But it wasn't just about food. The sanctions also crippled businesses and livelihoods, plunging countless families into economic hardship. Border towns, once thriving hubs of trade, became ghost towns as merchants were unable to cross into neighboring countries. It's like we're living in a prison, lamented one trader from the town of Maradi, near the Nigerian border. Our businesses have been destroyed, and we can't even leave to find work elsewhere. As the economic toll mounted, concerns grew about a looming humanitarian crisis. Access to essential supplies like medicine and fuel was threatened, raising fears about the potential consequences for vulnerable populations. Many deaths were reported in hospitals that could not operate without electricity, but the suffering didn't stop there. In border communities, the sanctions also led to electricity shortages and a surge in insecurity. With economic opportunities vanishing, many turned to crime and banditry to survive, 
creating a vicious cycle of instability and despair. We used to feel safe here, said a resident of Diffa, a town near the Nigerian border. But now, with so many young people out of work and desperate, we live in constant fear of being robbed or attacked. As the weeks turned into months, the toll on Niger's civilian population became increasingly dire. The question on everyone's mind, how long could this crisis continue before the humanitarian consequences became too severe to ignore? But there are more. The ECOWAS ban on financial transactions on Niger caused the country to default on loans granted by ECOWAS organs. The implication among others include paying higher interest on the borrowed amount. However, what the leadership in Niger could not fathom is why an African organization that is supposed to protect it against external threat is the one punishing it. They also saw ECOWAS action as a strategy to stir up internal revolt in their country by citizens to force them out of power. Niger then accused ECOWAS of working with Western powers to destabilize Niger and force the out of power. Given this scenario, what was Niger supposed to do? Niger's reaction to the crippling ECOWAS sanctions was one of defiance and retaliation. Imagine, that's precisely how Niger felt, and they weren't going to take it lying down. In a bold move, the military junta announced its own set of sanctions against ECOWAS member states, effectively shutting down the regional bloc's operations within its borders. They declared a no-fly zone over their territory for both military and commercial aircrafts over their territory. This caught many ECOWAS countries off guard as a detour by commercial flights made flight tickets more expensive and the flying time longer. After months of crippling sanctions that pushed Niger to the brink of a humanitarian crisis, ECOWAS finally decided to lift most of the punitive measures on humanitarian grounds. But don't be fooled, this wasn't a sign of surrender or forgiveness. It was a calculated move to ease the suffering of the Nigerian people while still maintaining targeted sanctions and political pressure on the military junta. So, when ECHO was announced the lifting of border closures, trade restrictions, and the no-fly zone for commercial flights, it was met with a collective sigh of relief. But the celebrations were short-lived, as the regional bloc made it clear that this was no act of appeasement. We're lifting the sanctions to alleviate the suffering of the people, but make no mistake, our demands remain the same, one ECOWAS official declared. And Niger's response? Defiance. We don't want to be a pawn in anyone's game, declared a Nigerian official, reflecting the nation's unwavering stance against what they perceive as bullying tactics by ECOWAS. The lifting of sanctions was a welcome relief, but it did little to mend the fractured relationship between Niger and ECOWAS. Trust had been shattered, and the junta's defiant rhetoric fueled the fragmentation of the regional bloc. Besides, Niger believed that ECOWAS was playing out a script written by Western powers. Do you believe that? However, Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso formed the Alliance of Sahel States, and together, they quit ECOWAS. They have refused to rejoin ECOWAS after sanctions were lifted, citing among others, the inhuman treatment meted out to Niger by the sanctions. As the dust settles, one thing is clear. Niger's struggle for sovereignty and self-determination is far from over. The easing of sanctions may have alleviated the immediate humanitarian crisis, but the underlying political tensions remain unresolved. The world watches with bated breath wondering if this small nation's defiance will be the catalyst for a seismic shift in the power dynamics of West Africa. As always, I appreciate you tuning in and letting me break down these complex geopolitical topics. Let me know what you think about the issues down in the comments below. Looking forward to that discussion, please like this video, share it, subscribe to our channel, and we will see you in our next update.